So what we're looking at now is we're looking through a two-way mirror. This is a, a mirror to the dolphin, and it's a window to us. And it actually functions as a window into the minds of dolphins. This is the National Aquarium, and this is a two-year-old dolphin named Bailey. So the question has been for me, do dolphins and other species like dolphins and elephants understand this sense of self? Do they have a concept of what we call mere self-recognition? And does she understand this is an external representation of herself? And is she motivated to use a mirror as a tool to view herself, parts of herself, activities that she can't see in the absence of a mirror? And we know that we are a mirror-using species. We have this capacity for this particular aspect of self-awareness. And, and poor Narcissus here was too obsessed with looking at himself. Um, I've used a mirror as a tool to study a particular aspect of self-awareness in non-human animals. And animals and children's reactions to mirrors have been very well documented as a reliable behavioral index for this aspect of developing self-awareness. But I want to be clear that self-awareness as theory of mind is not a unitary thing. And I think sometimes people think that when we say mirror self-recognition, as a measure of self-awareness, we mean that's all, you know, that's the only way to measure self-awareness. And it certainly isn't. It's a very specific visual task that lets us ask information about how humans and other species interpret the information they see in a mirror. And are there similarities? Are there any kinds of uh, convergences or continuities? And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. But again, mirror self-recognition in my mind is one index of self-awareness, which is a much wider category. And in, in babies, MSR develops, mirror self-recognition develops at approximately 18 to 24 months of age. And we heard that um, other cognitive aspects of theory of mind are also developing this age. And because mirror self-recognition seems to emerge about the same time as empathy, you know, around the same time, and other aspects of theory of mind. It's been suggested by Gordon Gallup and others uh, that there may be an ontogenetic link between these these uh, abilities, and also it, there may be a phylogenetic link with the, in the emergence of empathy, theory of mind, and uh, MSR and other aspects of theory of mind. And I want to talk about some of those things briefly today. But first, I want to just get us on the same page and talk a little bit about what you need to do cognitively to show mirror self-recognition. So first, you have to pay attention, selective attention, to the mirror as opposed to looking at other things. Do all species pay attention to a mirror? No. And many species will pay lots of attention to a mirror, but they interpret it as another, a conspecific, one of their own kind, and show social behavior. For those species that do pay attention, how do they interpret that information? Again, there's potential information in that mirror. And that's a key. How do they interpret that information? Do they have the cognitive capacity to understand that that one-to-one -one relationship has something to do with their own behavior? Do they have the proprioceptive knowledge to be able to understand what they're seeing in front of them is related to what they know about themselves and their movements in space? And finally, it seems to require not only this mental capacity, but the motivation to use the mirror as a tool to view yourself. Or we wouldn't have behavioral evidence to say anything about the minds of very young children and, and non-human animals when they're not speaking yet. Again, particularly in the case of, young, of animals, because we only have their behavior to look at. So again, we can recognize our faces in the mirror at, and at a relatively young age. But what about other faces? What about our closest relatives? And um, they, when we look at videos of them sh looking at a mirror, it's easy to uh, relate to the movements we see because they're so similar to us morphologically. Their brains are organized in similar ways. But what about non-human faces that are quite different? animals that have been separated from us for millions of years and have quite different morphologies in brain structure and in body form. Dolphins, elephants, and these are the animals that I've been so intrigued with studying uh, over the past years. What about these non-human faces in the mirror? Well, mirror self-recognition has been relatively uh, confined, has been uh, relatively confined to humans and the great apes until fairly recently. So I'm using uh, Franz Duval, who's a primatologist, as my token human here. So we know humans show it. The, uh, is there a similarity? So, so we have humans, we have, uh, sorry, Franz. 
we have the common chimpanzee showing it. We have the bonobos showing it. Bonobo chimpanzees, the orangutans, and the gorillas. And these are all members of the great apes a species. Now, interestingly, there's been a real dichotomy in those uh, species, those non-human primates and human primates that show it and don't. And the line's been drawn between the ape species and the monkey species. Uh, the great apes, who, by the way, also show evidence for empathy, and monkeys don't seem to show evidence for empathy. That's where the divide seems to be. There was one study that happened recently, I won't have time to go into details, suggesting or showing that rhesus macaques, rhesus monkeys, may also have this ability un under unusual circumstances, which was a very interesting finding. <laughs> now, yeah, I love this cartoon because it makes you it makes you realize it's often very difficult to discern whether another's animal understands is it looking at itself or is it looking at another. And let's talk about how we ask these questions. So first of all, Gordon Gallup, uh, in his uh, groundbreaking science paper in 1970, was the first to show mirror self-recognition in chimpanzees. That was the first non-human species uh, to demonstrate this ability. So, there are about three stages you see in, in route to showing mirror self-recognition. The animals are exposed to a mirror, and this is true for human animals as well. Initially, if they're mirror naive, they show exploratory behavior, trying to look behind, over you know, the mirror, trying to figure out what this thing is, if there's somebody there or not. And often you see social behavior with animals that are naive, acting like they're looking at another of their own kind. This is followed by a second stage, which we call contingency testing, and I'm going to let Groucho demonstrate what this looks like. So this is where you see a lot of contingency testing behavior, repetitive movements, testing this one-to-one -one contingency. And this seems to be where the light bulb goes on for those animals who go on to show mirror self-recognition. Again, you have to have some sense of proprioception of your own movements. And then you fit, and these animals have to figure out that, indeed, there is this one-to-one -one relationship. And then you start seeing a progression to more <laughs> self-directed behaviors. Yeah, I've seen this with dolphins, very similar kinds of behaviors with dolphins and elephants. The light bulb goes on. Once you see this critical stage, uh, you see a change to more self-directed behaviors. And these are defined basically by, again, these are all behaviors in front of the mirror where they're self-touching in front of the mirror. Often you'll see looking in one's eye, very close eye viewing, opening your mouth and looking at the inside of your mouth. Um, children, chimps, and some of the dolphins that we've observed uh, have looked at their genitals in a mirror. It's extremely interesting. Very similar behavior patterns. Now, this has been considered evidence in itself, self-directed behavior, for mirror self-recognition. And when Gordon Gallup did his original work, he developed another test called the Mark test, which he considered to be even a stronger, more objective test to assess mirror self-recognition, where you uh, put a mark on an animal's body. In the case of the chimps, it was put above their brow ridge. And initially, they did it with slightly an lightly anesthetized animals. And then it was done with animals not under anesthesia. But there's a mark placed on the body. When the animal comes back to the mirror, if it touches the mark on its body, more so than before it's been marked, because if an animal's always touching its head and just continues to, you can't really say anything. But if they touch their head and it was, there was a low probability of them doing that beforehand, then that was evidence of passing the mark test and showing mirror self-recognition. So these are some of the behaviors um, that have been seen. Close body viewing, self-grooming, looking in one's mouth, sticking out a tongue, nose picking, um, you know, again, self-inspection of different parts of the body. And I'm going to show you a short video clip. This is from a nature uh, show called Monkey in the Mirror. This is a chimpanzee showing that Groucho contingency testing, moving to more tentative, self-directed behavior. And now we have a beautiful case of using the mirror to examine what looks to be some dental work needed. Here's the mark test. And again, the animal comes in front of the mirror and touches the mark. So Gordon Gallup, uh, after his seminal work, had suggested that perhaps dolphins and elephants would be excellent candidates for studies like this for a number of reasons. They have large and complex brains like we do, like the great apes do. They show empathy. And these are two species that have shown empathy towards 
animals of their own kind as well as other animals, uh, other species. And there's a long history of, study, of uh, observations of elephants and dolphins showing what we would call empathic behavior or altruistic behavior. So they made good candidates. And I had been studying dolphins for about 25 years, and we had seen them do cognitive uh, abilities that were quite comparable to the great apes. So we went ahead and did a series of studies. Again, here's just a list. I won't go through all the, the attributes. But again, they do have large and complex brains. And as I said, they show both behavioral and social complexity and evidence uh, for altruistic or empathic behavior. And if there indeed is a link with the emergence of empathy, theory of mind at MSR, again, these may all be related, it, they made a very interesting study uh, subject. So here's a dolphin brain and a human brain. The dolphin brains are, uh, are way more than, are, than a human brain, but dolphins are larger animals than humans. And we can also think about uh, what's called an encephalization quotient. This was first suggested by Jerison, and this is a, a, a slide by uh, Laurie Marino, who plotted the ratio. This is a ratio, brain-body ratio, of what the size of a brain is relative to the body size. It's the expected brain uh, weight to run a body of a particular size. So human EQ is seven, means the brain is seven times larger than would be predicted to operate that body. And the great apes range from uh, 1.8 to 2.3, uh, uh, and then to 1.6 for gorillas. Dolphins, 4.2. So their brains, in terms of EQ, are larger than that of uh, the great apes, They're closer to humans. Again, we don't know how to measure relative intelligence in terms of brains. Is it the number of neurons? Is it the organization? Uh, is it the overall size? These are all interesting questions, of course. So the other thing about the dolphin brain before I move into behavior is that while they're large and complex, there's no one area that's associated as the front, that's considered the frontal lobe. And it doesn't mean that they're not doing similar processes, but there isn't a particular area we can identify, identify as frontal lobe. So that makes it uh, dolphins a very interesting animal to study uh, in their own right. So we did a study with two dolphins at the New York Aquarium, where I was research director, 13-year-old Presley and 17-year-old Tab. These were two captive-born dolphins. We saw the same progression of stages in their behavior that had been reported for chimpanzees and children. When we first exposed them to mirrors, they had already had reflective surfaces in their dolphin pool at the aquarium because they were glass walls. And you, when you get a differential light inside the tank and outside of the tank, it sets up sort of a mirror-like reflection. And we had seen things that looked like they might be looking at themselves in the mirror. But we put a real mirror in, and we got quite a radical difference in behavior. So they never showed the social stage. We didn't see social behavior, but they have made, they've had experience with reflective surfaces. We did see contingency testing and self-directed behavior very quickly. And once we saw that, we moved on to running the mark test, and we marked the animals with a non-toxic mark on different parts of their body that they could not see without a mirror. And we ran several mark tests with each dolphin. With the chimpanzees, often you'd run one test, and if they pass, that was sufficient. We needed to do more because we had what we call the no hands problem. They could not touch the mark. We could not get that nice response. So that instead, we tested would the dolphins, when marked, race to the mirror and orient that part of their body that was marked right away to the mirror. And we felt that that would be compelling evidence for us to interpret as mirror self-directed. So it wasn't just dilly-dallying and eventually getting to the mirror. We really had a requirement of them racing to the mirror, immediately ori orienting that part of their body to the mirror, and looking within the first 15 seconds. So that was a pretty strict criteria, but we didn't want to be fooled. So we had uh, tested them in two different pools. This is the second pool we tested them in. And what you're seeing is the dolphin is marked at one end. This is once they've shown self-directed behavior and we start marking them. The mirror is at the other end. And we predicted if they really understand that they can use the mirror as a tool to see themselves and they're motivated, they would race down to the other end, orient to that mirror, and and expose that part of their body to the mirror right away. And here's just a video. This is the dolphin, these were the dolphins in their first pool. They're taking toys over to a mirror. Where that dolphin is, is where a mirror is placed on the outside of the pool. It's where that white mark is. It's a very thin mirror. This is the close eye viewing we were talking about. I've slowed this down so you can see it a little bit more easily. We also saw, here's the Groucho stage, the contingency testing stage. 
at the mirror. And it's very hard to discern whether this is self-directed or just contingency. And I, I continue to have problems with this. But in the beginning, we call it contingency until we see evidence for clear self-directed behaviors. Then we mark them. And again, the expectation is they're going to come back and the criteria is they're going to come back and orient. So this is Presley, the first dolphin we worked with. He races back to the mirror right away. He didn't circle the pool. He went right to the mirror after he was marked. And he is now orienting. He's marked on his head. And you see him. And this is, we have to do baseline behavior. We do all the controls where we have a non-reflective surface as well as a mirror and see what their normal behavior is. Now, this is Presley a little bit later. We pretended to mark him with a sham mark, a water mark. And we actually started doing this before we ever marked him just to see what he'd do as a control for the mark. When we just marked him before he was never marked, he never went to the mirror when he was shammed. I don't think he knew he was marked. Once he was marked and saw the mark, when we did what we called the late marks, once he had been marked, we started doing the shams. He is looking for a mark. This is a dolphin with something in mind. And he, we marked him underneath his pectoral fin, and he is crammed in the corner where the mirror is now, a different location. So now this is a, a bird's eye view of these pools I showed you before, where we put the mirror in the, uh, at one end. This dolphin now, Presley, is getting marked under his chin. This is a different location. First time, and you're going to see him. He's at the far end of the pool. He's going to race down to the mirror. The other dolphin in the foreground is not marked, and he doesn't do that. He did it when he was marked, however. So here is Presley already at the mirror, and if you notice, his behavior is quite different. He's now stretching his neck up, exposing that area of his body. This is a different behavior than we saw. And now it's 1038. Just for time's sake, I cut this to a little bit later. It's now 1043. He is still at the mirror. <laughs> Notice that the other dolphin is not. So if they thought there was another dolphin that was marked there, you would think that they would both be watching, and they would both be maybe imitating that behavior. But that's not what you get. This is a dolphin that understands it's marked. It's using the mirror to self-view. Now, if you want to see your whole body in the mirror, what do you need to do? You need to back away from it. So Presley here understands the contingencies of mirror use. He's now backed away, and you see him looking in the mirror and spinning. Looking and spinning. He, under, he has learned how to use a mirror to view himself. This is not a trained behavior. It does not exist in their repertoire. So I'm just going to finish quickly here um, and talk about a few last things about elephants, just with, with our time limit. Um, with, these are two species that have been separated by millions of years of, of separate evolution from very different environments, different body forms, showing this very same ability. And we felt that this was, important, uh, this was very nice evidence for cognitive convergence in these two species. My colleagues, uh, Gordon, uh, Franz Duval, and Josh Plotnick, and I did the same series of tests with Asian elephants. And again, this list, you could just overlay this list with what we, with the list I showed you with dolphins. We ran the same sets of tests. I just want to mention that the elephant brain uh, is about 4,700 grams. It's again much larger, but so are their bodies. And their EQ is that of similar to what we find in the great ape species. So uh, elephants also show evidence for empathy. And this is an elephant. This is a picture from Ian Douglas Hamilton. And he reports um, elephants helping other elephants when they're uh, injured or when they're sick. And this is, an, these are, this is an unrelated female repeatedly trying to lift up, an, uh, again, a non-related uh, uh, elephant. That's an elephant, not a dolphin. So we exposed, uh, we exposed three elephants at the Bronx Zoo, Happy, Maxine, and Patty, to jumbo-sized mirrors. And we, in the case of elephants, because they could smell the mark, we had to go to extra precautions and sham mark them with an invisible mark made of the same substance as the visible mark to control for olfactory cues. They were exposed to mirrors. They were, showed great interest in the mirrors, very similar to dolphins. And by the way, the dolphins and the elephants were quite silent in front of mirrors. I think that's really important because you normally would not get that in a social situation. By the way, elephants also, once they started showing more self-directed behavior, seem to enjoy eating in front of the mirror. <laughs> and that's been reported for chimpanzees as well. Um, so here's some of the contingency testing behavior. This is uh, the one elephant out of the three, Happy, was the only animal that passed the mark test. However, However, all three elephants showed both contingency testing and strong evidence for self-directed behavior. So here she is doing some repetitive movements. And again, you have to do baseline, because if these animals are normally moving like this, you can't call it contingency testing. So we saw nothing like this. And she did a lot of throwing uh, dirt over her head and doing this kind of uh, self, you know, 
uh, self-marking. Now, here's another example of the contingency testing. Here we see, again, this one, Elephant Happy, showing uh, something that looks like she's doing the two-step in front of the mirror. <laughs> and she'll come back into the front. We're actually looking through the mirror, I should say. We have a camera embedded in the mirror. And they show nothing like this in baseline. So we're seeing a lot of this little, again, it looks very much like what we saw with Groucho. <laughs> so finally, we did the mark test. And again, this is Happy with a mark on one side of her head and the sham on the other. She never touched either side until she got to the mirror. And then once at the mirror, you'll see what's happening. Again, we're looking through the mirror. She touches close to the mark. And the only place she's, is she touching is that mark. And she's showing much more mark-directed behavior as well. You'll actually see a touch to the mark. She's at within eight feet of the mirror, to four to eight feet of the mirror now. It's kind of a distorted image. And now she puts dirt on the mark. And we have cameras going from both sides. So finally, we have evidence that these three, these various species that are highly divergent all show the same uh, abilities. And recently, more recently, in 2008, there was evidence that showed magpies also showed the same progression of stages and very similar behaviors as well. So here we have sort of the MSR club to date. <laughs> What's really interesting, and I'll just summarize now, is that the species that show this ability all have large and complex brains. They all exhibit social and cognitive complexity. They exhibit empathy or altruistic behavior, although we don't know much about birds, magpies yet. They, and what's really striking to me is that they show the same progression in the stages moving towards expo from exposure to mere self-recognition and strikingly similar specific behaviors. So it leaves us with a lot of big questions. Do some species show MSR? Why do some species show it and others don't? Are there neural correlates? And at what age does it develop? Well, this is a two-year-old dolphin. And um, we're, we're now doing studies on development. And I'm not going to be able to tell you at what age it develops. I'll say it's very young. And we'll leave that for another talk. Thank you. <laughs>